everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Wanted to come in and do a video. Uh, today we're doing a sensitive topic, so be alert for that if you have children around. Um, but it's a topic that I wanted to originally do two videos on. Uh, and split it into two topics, but I just can't because they're so closely intertwined. There's so much confusion and there are verses that kind of overlap for each other. And so I kind of wanted to do just one video. And really it's an update of a video I did uh, a number, uh, maybe a year back or so. It was called Your Spouse and Torah. And uh, and so it's kind of, you know, got a little bit of that in it. We're going to go over some of what we went over in that. And But it's a topic that originally was... I was motivated to do it, but I really got motivated when I got a letter from a, from a viewer just last week. And so I thought this is the perfect time to tackle this whole topic. And let's get into it. Here is the email uh, that was sent to me from the viewer. And it says, hey, Zach, can you help me? My daughter is having a hard time coming close to Yahweh. When she was young, she had been raped. And she points out verses in the Bible that say if a woman is raped, that he is to marry her and give the family, animals, etc. And she is sickened by that. How can I explain this to her as I am only one year into the truth of Yahweh? Now, she doesn't want to get close to him. Please help. Thank you for your time, Valerie. Okay, so where do we begin? Uh, let's just go ahead and start here. What she's confused about is a verse in Deuteronomy. And really what uh, it's a commandment given in the book of Deuteronomy that was actually given uh, in the book of Exodus. Exodus 22, verse 16. And let's just go ahead and read that verse, Exodus 22, 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Okay, and so there's the verse right there. It doesn't really give any information on what that dowry of virgins is or what that money is according to the dowry of virgins. Uh, but what this, you know, and a lot of times uh, commandments that we have early in the Torah are repeated later in the Torah, because and the reason for that is you have the parents who were eventually were disobedient and didn't want to go into the land and were killed off after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And then the commandments are given again by Moses to their children, anyone who was under the age of 20 that survived. And then they, before they entered the promised land, got to hear the Torah all over again uh, from Moses after the father gave him the commandments. Moses gives them again the commandments, and you see that repeated, most of them, or almost all of them, repeated again in Deuteronomy. And you see this, this verse, Deuteronomy 24, or, sorry, Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29. And it gives us a little more detail. Let's read the verse. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. And she shall be his wife, because the man, or sorry, because he has humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Okay, so it gives us a little more detail. It gives us the information on what is the dowry of virgins. Now the problem is, the issue is, the main problem, and I encounter this all the time, is that modern versions of the Bible, if you have an NIV or an ESV or a New Living Translation or an NASB or a New American Standard Bible, whatever, I mean, well, all these new versions basically that, are, that come from the Latin Vulgate, if you have a modern translation of the Bible, chances are your version right there in Deuteronomy twenty two twenty eight 28 says rape, says the word rape. Um, it's not rape. Okay, where it says right there, and it says, and lay hold on her. That word, that Hebrew word right here that says, and lay hold on her, that means to lay hold on to something, is the same word that's being used for Potiphar's wife when she lays hold on Joseph. And let me submit to you that Potiphar's wife is not raping Joseph, is not going to rape Joseph. You can't. A woman does not rape a man. Okay, that just doesn't happen. Okay, and so that's the word that's being used here again. And the word in, in, in modern translations, it's been confused and mistranslated and oftentimes mistranslated as rape. It's not rape, folks. This is consensual sex. What is being described here is someone who's being um, uh, enticed, okay, and, and, and it's consensual sex. This is not rape whatsoever. And, and it makes no sense. And so let me just go ahead and, and throw this out there. There is nowhere in your Torah, you know, and, and I have not seen it. There's nowhere in your Bible where it actually talks about the rape of an unbetrothed woman. Okay, there's no Torah commandment that had deals with that subject. And it doesn't have to. That's, that, that's really the reality. The father doesn't need to address the topic of rape of an unbetrothed woman because 
really, you fall under the same category as a betrothed woman when you're under your father's covering. We know from Numbers chapter 30 that the woman, the, the, the wife and the daughter are under the father's uh, and the husband's covering. That means protection. That means authority. It's my, it's my, as a father, it's my responsibility to protect and provide for my wife. Okay, I am her covering. Period. And if you're a daughter living in your father's household, it's your father's responsibility to protect and provide for you. You are under his covering. And so if, if, a, if, a, if a woman is raped who is not betrothed to a husband, because when you're betrothed, you're basically married by law. Okay? If, you're, if you're raped and you're not betrothed, you, I mean, who, the rapist, the person who has done that is just guilty of death. Because it's the same as raping a married woman, someone who's under the covering of this time a father instead of a husband, you know, being the wife. That, that, it's that simple. You know, a rapist is guilty of rape and it, the punishment is death. Punishment is stoning. And so, uh, you know, in today's society, um, you know, we don't, a lot of rapists go free or they serve a little bit of time, probation, things like that. And we're not, we're, we're living in a lawless society. But you will not find a Torah commandment that deals with the rape of an of a non-betrothed woman because it doesn't need to be given because you're under the father's covering uh, when you're when that girl is living in her father's household and it's the same as raping a married woman raping the wife because you're taking something from out of that covering and that that is undesired what is being described here in Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29 and in Exodus 22, verse 16 is talking about consensual sex between two people who are unmarried. It's fornication. And what's the punishment for fornication? Consensual sex outside of marriage. It tells us in Deuteronomy 22, it says that there are 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. That's right, folks. You have taken something out of a covering that is not yours to take. It's simple. And the punishment is 50 shekels of silver. So uh, 50 shekels of silver uh, would be normally uh, 25 ounces. Uh, a shekel is about a half of an ounce of silver. Uh, this, is a, this is an ounce of silver right here. And uh, a shekel would normally be a half ounce. It's estimated from you know people who deal in antiquities that the, a shekel at that time was about a half an ounce of silver. And here's a full ounce. So a half of this. And so let's just do a little... I'm I'm gonna, you know, we have all of this. Now that we've addressed this topic, we have all of these Christian organizations out there, Promise Keepers, Knights of the 21st Century, or whatever they're called, and uh, all, all, of the, all of Christianity will come to you and say, well, you should not, they'll try to tell you over the pulpits, you should not engage in premarital sex. You should not engage in pre premarital sex is wrong. But they never show you where it says that in the Bible. Uh, it's right here, folks. It's Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29, and then Exodus 22, verse 16. That's where it says it. It says it in the Torah. Okay, that's where it says that you should not engage in premarital sex. And there's a punishment that goes along with that. It's 50 shekels of silver to the father. Now, the father, once he realizes that something from under his covering was taken hold of without his permission, he can either deny uh, that the marriage take place based on Numbers chapter 30. He can deny that um, and says, right, he says uh, he may not put her away all of his days. Um, you know, he, the, the man can marry her, but the, the father does have the ability to say no. Either way, the, the boy must pay 50 shekels of silver or what's today 25 ounces of silver. And so what does that, what does all that mean? You know, we have all these Christian organizations out there saying that you shouldn't be engaged in premarital sex, and yet it happens. It's rampant. There was an article that came out today that 80%, 80% of Christian singles are having sex outside of marriage. 80%. Why? Why is there no, why is there no, there, there's no hammer, you know, that, that, that comes down, you know, as punishment for people who break the Torah anymore. And this was the hammer right here, the silver, the silver. Think about it. Let's do, all right. Think of it this way. Let's do a little math here. In Matthew 20, verse 2, okay, it says that a man is paid a denarius for a day's wage. It even says that a day's work was 12 hours of work. 12 hours for a day's wage. People in today's workforce have it easy working their eight hours. But it was 12 hours for a day's wage back then. 
The silver denarius is about the same size as a modern-day silver Roosevelt dime made in 1964. That was the last year they made silver in our currency was 1964. In the movie Far and Away, we can see that a chicken factory worker was paid a silver dime for a day's wage. And true enough, history bears this out that at the turn of the century, the average factory worker was paid a dime, a silver dime, for a day's wage. 12 working hours. Now, keep in mind that a silver dime is almost the exact same size as a silver denarius. The same amount of silver for a day's wage, spanning from the time of our Messiah all the way to the turn of the 20th century. In 1913, Woodrow Wilson, the President Woodrow Wilson, created the Federal Reserve Banking System, and manipulation of our precious metals backed currency began, and by 1965, all silver content was removed from the American currency and most other currencies around the world as well. But if we are trying to figure out the real value, of an ounce of silver in unmanipulated currency amounts, we need to figure out what a day's wage is worth in silver according to pre-1900s value. Here is where the simple math comes in. President Obama signed by executive order in 2000, beginning of 2014, it was just the other day, that the minimum wage for all federal workers is $10 an hour. So if an hour of work is worth $10 an hour, and historically a day, a work day is 12 working hours, a day's wage being a silver dime would be historically worth about $120 of buying power. That actually doesn't buy you a lot these days. I mean, think about it. A pair of good jeans today cost $50. A family of four seeing a movie at a local theater would be about the same or more once you buy popcorn, drinks, and a box of snow caps. It takes 14 silver dimes or a denarius, 14 silver denariuses or 14 silver dimes to make up an ounce of pure silver. So if a day's wage is historically worth $120, $120 times 14 is $1,680. $1,680. So if the penalty for sex outside of marriage, as listed in Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29, is to pay the father of the girl 50 shekels of silver, which today would be about 25 ounces, an ounce of silver is historically worth in today's dollar value $1,680, that means that the father would be owed $42,000 for the daughter being taken out from under his covering without his permission. Now, you can go out and buy, you know, 25 ounces of silver uh, probably for around 800 bucks, 700 bucks. But that's not, that's not its historical value from the time of our Messiah all the way from the time of the turn of the 20th century. Its real value is about, for 25 ounces, would be about $42,000. That is a hefty price to pay for engaging in something the world today takes so lightly. Fornication between young, unmarried couples is rampant on TV today. It's, it's something that's glorified and romanticized about in today's culture. And yet, the result of this practice is young people full of broken hearts, unwanted pregnancies, painful abortions, dangerous diseases, depression, stress, anxiety, all stemming from an indulgence that our Creator talks about in His Torah. His instructions to His people to be set apart a peculiar people different from the rest of the world. Can you imagine if the father was entitled to 40, if the father of a daughter that was taken from out from under his covering, taken out from, from under his, his household without his permission, can you imagine if a, if a father was of that daughter was entitled to $42,000 by a young man who took hold, took hold of his daughter without his permission? There would be a lot less sex outside of marriage, folks. A lot less sex between uh, young people, you know, without the permission of the parents. And, and I mean, the young man would have to be working for the rest of his life to pay off the father. And, and really, so the bottom line of this, you know, the bottom line of this is that the Bible does not condone rape. Um, the Bible does not condone sex outside of marriage. Uh, if you take something, and, and if you take the daughter or the wife, something that's under the covering of another man, and you lay hold on them without their consent, the punishment is death. If, if it's consensual, the punishment is still death if it's a married woman, but if it's not a married, if it's, not, if it's a consensual sex between an unmarried woman, then they do have to get married, or they should get married. The father can say no, but the boy still has to pay 25 ounces of silver or 50 shekels. And historically, that amount is a lot higher than what it was just at the turn of the century, when 25 ounces of silver was worth about buying power-wise $42,000. Um, the Federal Reserve, manipulation of the Federal Reserve has done a lot more harm than most people realize. Just
for just be, it's not just usury, what the father calls an abomination in his word. It's actually affected, you know, sexuality in our country. Because we still, there's no punishment anymore for people who go outside of marriage and who have sex outside of marriage. Now, what I talked about in the video I did about a year ago, whatever it was, um, it's called Your Spouse and Torah. I was driving down the road one day and I was listening to the radio and I was listening to a Christian pastor. Uh, it was a very famous Christian pastor. If I mentioned his name, you'd, you would totally know who he was. And he was talking about how many of the couples that he had, it was talking about marriage, you know, and the divorce rate today. And he was talking about the many thousands of couples that he had mentored and counseled throughout his career, many thousands of couples who he had sat in his office and talked to them. And he realized that most of the marriage problems that came before his office and came before him that he addressed and counseled on were because the, pro the main problem in the relationship was that the man was no longer the alpha in the relationship. The woman was the alpha and the man was playing the role of the beta. And he didn't understand this. And, and he, he began to probe further throughout, these, you know, throughout his career and, and the many thousands of couples that he was in, uh, interviewing and counseling and he realized something. He realized that one of the reasons that all of these couples, um, it seemed like that they were, the man was the beta and, and, and the woman was the alpha. The man wasn't taking responsibility in the relationship. The woman was taking the, she was being the spiritual household head. She was being the working household head. She was doing all these things that the man historically should be doing as the alpha of the relationship. And it was causing all kinds of problems, but he was seeing all these problems and tracing it back to simply the man not being the alpha and the woman not being the beta in the relationship. And then it dawned on him. He said, it, if he figured it out, he realized, and he said, it, it, he said something that basically hit me over the head like a two by four. And stay with me, folks, stay with me. He says that, he realized that all of these people, almost over nine, about 99%, 98, 99% of these couples who had this problem of the man being the beta and the woman being the alpha, he figured out because he was taking notes on all these couples. He went back and he realized all of these couples didn't wait to have sex before marriage. During their time of dating and courtship, they engaged in fornication. They engaged in sex before marriage. And he said something at that point on the radio that I was driving down the road that it hit, hit me like a, a ton of bricks. He said, it's like they were cursed. He said, it's like they were cursed. What does our Torah tell us? I will give you blessings and I will give you curses. Blessings if you keep my commandments and curses if you don't. And, and some, sometimes the Torah gives us specific curses for specific sins. If you don't follow these commandments, here's the curses you get. If you follow, if you follow the commandments, here's the blessings you get. But a lot of times it doesn't. Most of the time, the Torah does not give you the specific curses and the specific blessing, blessings that you get for following or turning away from our Father's commandments. And this man, this pastor, who is a pastor for I don't know, 20, 30 years, I'm not sure. He was a big name pastor. If I gave you the name, you'd recognize it. He said, he said, it's like they were cursed. He got, you know, he didn't understand, you know, that it had relate, any relation to Torah. But I'd love, to sit, I'd love to sit down with that man and tell him today, that's why. It's because they were cursed. You know, you have sex outside of marriage, folks. You take something outside of another person's covering, a father's covering that you do not have permission to take. You're breaking a commandment. You're breaking the commandment of Deuteronomy 22, 28, and 29. You're taking something outside of the covering. You're breaking the, the commandments in Numbers chapter 30 when it clearly says that the woman, you know, she can declare something to her father and the father can either say yay or nay. And at that point, that's it. When the father says nay. You know, and people are so offended by that. And there are probably some of you who are offended by that. That a woman can't decide who she's going to marry. You know, this is one of the largest life decisions you can make. Why would you not involve your parents in it? The people who love you the most on this planet. Now I understand that not all parents are great and some of us have maybe have parents that don't, you know, who aren't around all the time or who left us or, or have their own set of problems. And maybe those wouldn't be good parents to maybe have or involve in life decisions like this. But a lot of us have parents who love us, who love us deeply. Why would we not include our parents on life choices that are going to affect us the rest of our lives. I think we should probably do that. And I know a lot of parents today who are coming into the truth of Torah are doing that for their children. I'm raising up my child, my seven-year-old. He knows that, that mommy and daddy are going to pick a wife for him one day. 
You know, now he has veto power. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we are going to be very involved in picking and choosing the wife for our children, you know, our two boys. And so, you know, we don't do things like that today. And you have these articles like this, 80% of Christian singles are engaging in premarital sex. And you have, you know, issues where a pastor is talking about counseling thousands of couples. And it's he, he realizes that most of the couples, most of the problems come down to the fact that one is being the alpha who shouldn't be and the other is being the beta who shouldn't be. And he says that it was like they were cursed. There was a switch that took place at some point with these people early in their marriage where the man became the beta and the woman became the alpha and that led to all sorts of other problems and, you know, how do they correct it? He said, folks, that as soon as he got these couples to start repenting, you know, that they had, they had broken, they had sinned by having sex outside of marriage and repenting that something miraculous happened. What happened? The man, again, became the head of the household, the spiritual leader of the home, and the woman became the helpmate that she was intended to be. And a lot of the problems that plagued these marital couples went away. They went away. Repentance. Teshuva. You know, who to thunk it? You know? <laughs> There's a lot of things that we're reading. That's why we read the Torah over and over again. We see where we've fallen short. That's what the law does. It shows us what sin is. If we don't know what sin is, we won't know what to repent from. You know, and that's what our Messiah came to free us from. The punishment of the sin. The sin that, that we have the, th the things we have done, the punishment we deserve, he took upon himself. That's what our Messiah did. He set us free from the punishment, not from the law. He set us free from the punishment we deserve for breaking that law. So anyway, I wanted to do this video because I got this heartbreaking letter from Valerie and uh, about her daughter. And, you know, uh, Valerie, my heart goes out to, I get a lot of emails like this. And, you know, and I, I'm flattered that you want to open up to me and, and I want to help as much as I can just give you my opinion on scripture. Um, uh, but, you know, I guess the thing you need to just keep in mind the most is just stay in prayer. Stay, stay, you know, stay in the word. Um, get a good version of the Bible. Take these modern versions out because a lot of people are confused by this stuff. It doesn't say rape in Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29. It's not rape. It's consensual sex. Um, and um, it's very clear if you do the research on it uh, that that's what it is. And so I, I want to leave it at that. We'll, we'll let it leave it at that. I hope this video has been an encouragement to you all. And uh, again, um, I, I, I really appreciate your letters. Uh, thanks, Valerie, for writing in. I hope I helped. Uh, for the rest of y'all out there, I'll see you later. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.